What is good guys, we have smoked those 25 players round one between Black Oblivion and Googly. Looking at the teams, we're starting off with Auras. Most likely either Scarftar or Scarf Caldeo. Actually on both teams. Um Scarftar makes sense because Prince is a really huge threat. Outside of Slowbro, that is probably Mega Slowbro, but Slowbro um, kind of has to rely on burning Pinsir to beat it, especially if Pinsir has up a SD. So it makes sense um, for it to be Scarf, Titar, and then Keldeo could be Specs. So most likely standard Ferrothorn with Spikes, Lead Sheep, Power, then either Knockoff or Gyro Ball. Um, same on Google side. Most likely um, Rocks, Clef with Moonblast, Softball. It doesn't need Ice Beam because he already has a Slowbro that beats Glithgore. It's like one of the best, best answers for it. Then this... Um, the last move could be Flamethrower because SD Scissor destroys his team. He has to rely um, on Kelly Burning Scissor to beat it. So Flamethrower doesn't make sense in the last slot. Otherwise, T-Wave is also an option. But yeah, let's see. Um, Glithgore probably just a Roost knockoff of Quick Variant and last move either Taunt or SD. Really huge threat to Google's team. He should have Ice Beam on this or this. Otherwise, Glisco destroys him. His only other way of revenging it is Kaldio, and Kaldio doesn't want to keep coming in on Earthquakes, on Spikes, and Rocks whenever Black Oblivion gets them up. And Google has like no hazard control besides Ladi could be Defog, but I think Ladi is not going to be Defog. I think it's going to be a Common Win Con. It could also be like T Wave Ladi with like two attacks. But yeah, we have a turn one here. Let's talk about the game. I'm going to try to talk about the other sets later on Googly side. We have a few options here. If you're Black Oblivion, you can get up your rocks. If you have, if you don't have Flamethrower, if you have Flamethrower, you can just go for that to weaken the Pharaoh. If you're Googly and you want to scout for Flamethrower, you go to your own Clefable. Or um, if you don't care about taking a Flamethrower, you can get up a Spike or go for Knockoff to get rid of the Clefable's leftovers. So he does decide to um, go for Knockoff. Now it's really obvious that Googly is going to switch out to his own Clef here because he doesn't want to lose his Pharaoh Thorn. So if you're Black Oblivion here, um, you should just click Rocks. You don't lose anything, even if the Pharaoh stays in, it's completely fine. And if you get the play correct, you get them up for free, yep. So now he has two ways of beating this Clef. This is most likely going to be a CM Clef. Because I think the Rocker on Google side is actually going to be the Lando. Um, probably a defensive Lando. Just makes a lot of sense. Um, an answer for Zadex uh, other than Titar. Just physical attackers in general. Lando helps with that. If it's, it's either lefties or helmet. Probably helmet is more common, I think, yeah. So if this is not Ice Beam, then Glisco beats it. Um, and I think Common Slowbro also beats it because uh, it runs Psyshock, right? The thing is, if you go Gliscor and it's um, CM Ice Beam, then it can potentially can, can, then it beats you, right? So I'm not 100% sure if I would have gone Gliscor. I probably would have gone Slowbro. Maybe he doesn't have CM on Slowbro, but yeah, that's just taunt now. It's the moment of truth that he have Ice Beam. He does just common again. Common again means he probably doesn't have Ice Beam and he's probably just going to Moonblast. I heavily disagree with like CM him again on a taunt. Like, I don't get that play. But yeah, now. Um, Black Alien should just off quick, get some damage here. Google cannot beat the Gliscor unless he crits it. He pretty much relies on critting. You guys could see it at 38 and 40. Um, Black Oblivion has to taunt again here. So this is Googly's chance to fish for a crit, I guess. But without Hex, Clef never beats this Glisco because it's lacking Ice Beam. Um, unless he's bluffing Ice Beam and he doesn't want to show it. Um, but I think the last move on it should, never, it should not be Ice Beam. He already showed Moonblast. Um, it should be Flamethrower. The set that Blunder used the other day... Um, it was Ice Beam to beat Glisco and it was also Flamethrower to help with the Scissor matchup. That set is fire, but he has Moonblast. But yeah, last move on Googly's uh, side has to be... Um oh, he goes for hard. Ooh, okay, I'm, I was trying to explain his set. The last move is probably Flamethrower on Googly's side, but I'm getting behind on the turns. So he goes Pharos on there because he knows that he's never going to Secret Sword because he has a Slowbro and a Clef. So he's either going to Toxic or he's going to... Um this is a free opportunity to grab a spike for Black Oblivion. He's either gonna Toxic with the Keldeo or he's gonna Scald, right? So I understand why Black Oblivion went Feral Thorn. The reason why um, Keldeo on Scarf or Specs runs Toxic because it hits stuff like Jellicent and Slowbro on the Switch. Or also Ladi, I guess. Um, even though Ladi is not used that much as a Keldeo counter anymore. I think like mainly Among Us, Jellicent and Slowbro are like the main Keldeo answers. So Toxic only hits um, Slowbro and Jellicent out of those. And yet also hits Ladi. But yeah, this is, um, I agree with, completely agree with going Clefable on the Pharaoh Thorn because um, the, you scare him out with a flamethrower, you don't allow him to get any health back with Leech Seed and you also um, make it so that he only gets up one spike because he's forced out into his own Clef here. So you could double into Gliscor, predicting the Clef to come out or you could just attack uh, because the Clefable is forced to heal anyway. So he does just flamethrower, now Google is going to softball it, this gives him a free switch in the Gliscor. 
and now he can just taunt here it's super free he can also knock off predicting the switch because googly should know that he doesn't beat this kill score so googly's um potential switches here are i guess the ladi um because kelly doesn't really want to come in on a potential knock off plus hazards or potential earthquake even he tried to see him again heavily disagree with that play now he's forced out uh, Ladi makes the most sense. He goes Landris instead, so now he's gonna have to take a knockoff or earthquake. I mean, earthquake wouldn't take do any damage to him, but knockoff just made a lot of sense to me because it doesn't let the Ladi in for free. And like if Ladi or Lando or Kelly comes out, you knock off, you get chip damage. I completely agree with taunting there because he ensures that the that Googly doesn't get up rocks. And even if he U turns, it doesn't matter. His Lando already got chipped from hazards. Uh, you get the health back from poison heal anyway. So now he has to go Ladi or Kelly. I think he should have gone Ladi in the first place. I don't know why he went Landris and let it take the chip. And like it was just a great play on um, knocking, obviously, from Black Oblivion. There was just no risk. Because Cafebus Moonblast doesn't do much to Glisco. I didn't have a CM up. So it was obvious that Gulli was forced out and to um Ladi kill you or Lando. So now Ladi is the play that makes more sense to me because you don't want to go Kelly and take rocks plus spikes. And Ladi pretty much forces him to go into Ferrothorn. And the reason why I say Ferrothorn because um, he doesn't know the set yet, right? He doubles into Clef, and yeah, like I said earlier, this is probably Flamethrower Clef to help with the Scissor matchup. So um, Black Oblivion shouldn't stay in. He should just go back to Glisco. Google goes for CM. Um, so Black Oblivion should just taunt him here again. Um, pretty repetitive. We had this scenario earlier already. So Google is probably just gonna throw off a Moonblast this time. Oh, yeah, he CM'd again for some reason. But yeah, this time he just Moonblast. Now um, Black Oblivion can either knock off again, breaking the switch or Earthquake. Doesn't really matter. Uh, I guess Earthquake makes a bit more sense. But yeah, this just Earthquake, and he's forced. He should just. He's not forced to, but he should just taunt. Even if Google U turns again and predicts that, it's completely fine. Black Oblivion doesn't take any damage. Let's go get the broken poison heal on deck and it's doing its thing. Also, Landorus doesn't carry HPIs in Gen 6. They're like, defensive Landorus has like rocks, earthquake, U-turn. I think sometimes edge, sometimes toxic. So now either Ladi or Keldio has to come out. The thing is, um, now either Slowbro can come out or Ferrothorn. I, I would probably go with Slowbro. This time he's probably gonna Scald. He's not gonna Toxic again. Um, that's why I would go slow, bro. Like, he already got flexed on by um, Toxicking and B.O. went Feral earlier. So I don't think he's gonna Toxic again. Um, so if he scores, then we will see if he's um, Choice Scarf or Choice Specs. Depending on that, if this Keldeo is Specs, that means the Tar would be Scarf. If the Keldeo is Scarf, then that means the... Tar is banded, but he does it out into Pharaoh's on expecting the slow bro. Um, I guess that's an okay play because now he gets up spikes. Uh, because if he's a CM Megalardi, then he can potentially win the game um, with spikes up. Because if the Pharaoh's on gets chipped down, the Ladi can potentially beat it. Like Ladi is the only one that I see potentially beating the Glow score with either Ice Beam or Surf if it's CM, and it also. Um, with all hazards up, he has to get them all up. Um, I disagree with this play that Bio made. He scalds trying to burn the Ferrothorn. I think he should have gone hard into Clefable. Because, yeah, now he's getting leeched it back. If he went hard into Clefable, that meant he now he also can get up the third layer. Hard Clef meant he got no health back from leech sheet. He, and he only gets up one spike and then after he's forced out by flamethrower. But now this uh, gave him the opportunity to get up all three layers. Um, he's still in a good position. But he could have been in an even better position is what I'm trying to say. And so now the Clefable is really obvious from Google's side, it's gonna come out here like 100 million percent. So he can double into Glisco or he can Moonblast, it doesn't really matter. He could also Flamethrower, but he does make the double and he can just um, taunt here. He can also knock off, like it actually doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> I mean, uh, knock off is good in the sense that it doesn't let um, Ladi in for free. It will have to take rocks plus knock off and then it would be forced to heal and even Lander would take a good chunk from knock off. He does just taunt also a completely fine play. Now he can um, just knock off, get some juicy chip on the Landris. The Landris um, just U-turns. That's obviously the only thing it can do since it doesn't run HPIs in this gen. And now either Kelly or Ladi has to come out. Most likely Ladi, um, because if you go Kelly, you take hazards and you don't want that. And now um, he can potentially make a double that punches Ferrothorn, which is a double into Clefable because his Clefable has Flamethrower. I think a double into Clefable to let the Ferrothorn take three layers of spikes is a good play because if you double into Clef here, breaking the Ferrothorn, then he's forced to go back into Glyph score and then you can double back into Ladi breaking the Glyph score 
and Ladi always forces him to go in the Feral Thorn. So if you keep doubling around with spikes up between Ladi and Clef, two months that don't take uh, spikes, they only take um, Ladi takes rocks, Clef takes no damage. Then you can potentially um, chip down the Ferrothon enough to the point where Calm and Ladi can potentially win the game. Instead, he goes Landris. Uh, Bio went for Taunt, making a really risky play. Um, he either predicted a double and he's a complete genius, or he just. Um, I'm not really sure why he stayed in there because, like, I think he must have predicted a double and he taunted. Like, if the Ladi had Ice Beam and, his, and he lost his Gliscor, he would have pretty much lost the game right there. Like, I don't know if he would have lost the game, but he would have been in a horrible position. And at the moment, he's in a great position. But yeah, it worked out for him. I can't say anything. Lando got chipped more, took rocks, took another knockoff, and now either Ladi or Keldio has to come out again. Like, like, that's the play I would make, like I said earlier. Go Ladi on Glisco, double the Clef, scare out the Ferrothorn, because you have Flamethrower. I don't know, did he reveal it already? He should have it. I don't know if he revealed it already, but he should have it, because... Look at this scissor matchup, like, hello. Yeah, okay, I was talking about trying to talk about the Clefable earlier. The Clefable on Google's side should be, in my opinion, the set that Blunder used the other day. Call Mind, Ice Beam, Flamethrower. Because Scissor destroys him, Glisco destroys him. So he hasn't shown the Ladi set yet, but it's not Ice Beam, Ladi. I don't know what, how the fuck he's gonna beat this Glisco. So yeah, back to Slowbro here. Um, does he attack this time? He does not double out. So uh, he does attack this time. And he does not get the burn. And we know from that damage that it's most likely Choice Scarf Keldio. Because he went for Toxic earlier. And that damage is definitely not Specs. So now, um, he can either Skull again trying to get the burn. Or he can go hard into like Tita or something like that. He can also go hard into his Ladi, I guess. If he's a common Ladi. I don't know exactly. But yeah, if I'm Black Oblivion here, I would just click Slack off. Just to be sure that you are full. His other potential play would be Psyshock, but I think Slack Off is a better play. So Google does go hard Tita. Uh, expects the Psyshock or the Slack Off. Oof. And now it's kind of a 50 50 between. Um, the Tita is most likely Bennett because we know the Kelly was Scarf. So 50 50 between Crunch and Pursuit. Because I don't know if the Slowbro Megas. Maybe Crunch is a roll, but I think um, it would probably still do too much. Especially with Sandstorm being up. I think the Slowbro could Mega and eat the Crunch with Sandstorm up, especially here. Yeah. So it's a 50-50 between Pursuit and Crunch, and Google gets the play right, so it gets rid of Slowbro. Um, the sense the Kelio is not Specs, this doesn't matter too much, because the Clefable plus Ferrothorn combination still kind of deals with the Kelio. So Bio goes Ferro here, um, knowing that the Tita is locked into Pursuit, and he can get up a Spike for free here. Uh, Google is obviously forced to switch out into either his Clefable or his Landris. We, it, but going Clef doesn't do anything because he already knows that Glisco would just come out after and wall the Clef. So I agree with going Landris because this gives him a chance to get rocks up. And his Landris was almost dead, so he gets something out of the Landris at least. Um, but yeah, Power Up is going to kill the Landris. I think he could have gotten up the third layer there as well. But yeah, um, getting those lefties back is nice for Bio. But now he has up all three layers plus rocks. So maybe he can do the thing that I was talking about earlier. Um, Go Clef, scare out the Pharaoh, double to Ladi, scare out the Glisco, double to Clef, scare out the Pharaoh. And then Pharaoh gets chipped and chipped, and if you see him Ladi, you can maybe win with that. I don't even know if you see him Ladi, but I'm just trying to find a way for him to win the game, right? Um, so yeah, Clefable should come out here. Um, Bentar could come out if it has Fire Punch, but I don't think that's the play, because then you take Hazards for no reason. And I also don't think Fire Punch is common or us on Bentar. I think, I think they run super power in Auras, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It hits opposing Tita, it hits Chansey, I don't know what else it hits. It hits Kel your heart as well. But yeah, Clef should definitely come out here, and that forces Bio then to go on the Gliscor. Like, that's just his only play going Clef. So Bio is forced to go Gliscor here. Um, Googly could, like, if he CMs up, he has to just crit, it doesn't do anything, so he should double to Ladi, but he just flamethrowers. Okay, so I guess he um, banked on Bio. Um, he banked on Bio staying in, because if the Pharaoh goes down, then the Ladi can put in a lot of work. Um, the Kaldu can become a threat because it can spam Hydro Pump when the Pharaoh goes down. But yeah, um, Bio should just go for a Taunt here. Knockoff is also a fine play. Yeah, Knockoff is a fine play as well. Why did Earthquake? Okay. Like, I just don't get why Googly is staying in this. Why I said he Knockoff is a fine play, because the Ladi, in my opinion, had to come out there. But it's, uh, it's fine. Like, that wasn't like a... Like, Earthquaking was still a fine play for Black Oblivion, is what I'm trying to say. But I just don't really understand why Gooly was staying in with the cleft. That's why I would have knocked off. Okay, now the Ladi's in, and... I still don't know if it's his Ice Beam. It 
got doubled out a few times. It didn't attack yet, I'm pretty sure. And now, with all the health up, you could maybe try to pull that double into Clef that I've been talking about all the time. And try to chip the Feral with Hazards and double again and try to chip it. The thing is, Ninsa's Lottie's also getting kind of low. He's forced to roost eventually. I don't know if Bio wants to stay in and risk getting Ice Beamed here though. Huh. If he stays in and predicts the Lottie to be CM stored power, I guess he just taunts here. Yeah, I mean, if you stay in, taunt is your only play. Knockoff doesn't do that much to Megalardi. And if you um, taunt, you at least prevent him from spamming Call Mind. And you get information about the set, but if he's Ice Beam and you lose your Gliss score, then the um, opposing club pretty much wins at this point if you lose your Gliss score. So that's why I don't think it's worth it risking the Gliss God. Staying in, risking the Gliss God dying the Ice Beam. Because then the Call Mind Clef just wins. Because his Clef is not CM, so you can't even have a CM war. His Tita is. Um, Probably Scarf. I don't, we don't know that yet, right? I don't think we know that yet. But it's probably Scarf, so it can't even beat the Clef. Um, so I don't think it's worth it to risk the Gliss score here, because you just lose the game if you get Ice Beamed. Like, if I'm Google here, um, I either just Mega an Ice Beam, or I double into Clef. Like, it depends if he has Ice Beam. <laughs> I obviously don't know his set. Um, ice Beam... But what would be his set? What would be his set? He's not. He's not default. He just has a stack. He doesn't have default. He's like recover. He could be recover, calm, and stored power, ice beam, or stored power surf. I, dude, I don't know. Like, hmm. If it's not stored power, then Black Oblivion can also. Um, if it's not CM, I mean, then the Clef from Bio can also beat this Lari. But he doesn't know that yet. So I think Pharaoh is still the play. Uh, so just stay in. What if he gets Ice Beam? He just gets Surf. So why do you go for Taunt? Yeah. So hit Surf. Surf, Recover. CM Stored Power? Or is it just like Recover 3 attacks? Or like T-Wave 2 attacks? I think it's CM. Because his team doesn't have... I guess he has a Clef with CM already. But yeah, Glisco can roost, out roost this for a few turns to get some health back. Um, out roost this Surf damage is what I'm trying to say. So he goes hard into T-Turn now. Um, which can eat a surf because it has the sandstorm boosting its spadef. Oh yeah, I was talking about going hard into Pharaoh all the time. Hartita also makes a lot of sense. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Um, I think you can pursue it here potentially. Because the um, having the Lari low is cool. I mean, if uh, Googly predicts the pursuit, surf is going to take out the Tita, but his Lari is still going to be low as shit. And then he's gonna be forced to recover. That gives Black Oblivion free turns to like go to Ferrothon and Leech Seed or something like that. Or go to Clef and spam Moonblast. And like try to fish for crits and special attack drops. I don't know. So he just pursued and there's nothing. So he predicted that he went for Surf, I think. Yep. So he just take out the T Tar. Um, yeah, those, that's why another thing about the hazards were pretty cool for him. Like, I, I, I talked about doubling predicting Pharaoh, but doubling would have also covered the. The thing, the Titar. So let's just get the. I think they cheat. Toxic. Ooh, tech. It's toxic Pharaoh Zone. Who's man? I've not seen it in a fan minute. Or well, maybe once I have seen it, but I haven't seen it often. But yeah, now the Lari is on a timer and it can never win the game. Unless it's refresh. But if it's refresh surf, then it's. That's not a set. Nah, no, no. refresh surf recover. Nah. Nah, nah, there's no way it's that set. <laughs> But yeah, Googly has to switch into f uh, his Fable here because the Toxic is gonna rack up and he's gonna get Leech Shield if he stays in. So if I'm Black Oblivion here, um, you either click Power Whip or Gyro Ball. Why did he serve? He breaked the double into Glisco or what? I don't really get it. Like, Black Oblivion had no reason to double. Stain is completely fine for him. So he has Power Whip, Toxic, Leech Shield, Spikes. Okay, so he doesn't have Gyro Ball. So just Whip again. Yep. Some damage on the clef, force the clef to soft boiled. And this is a free switch into Gliss score again. So Googly finally starts making the double into Ladi breaking the Gliss score, but the problem is he takes poison damage plus hazard damage. And he's forced to go for recover, kind of. And he's also not Ice Beam, so this is a free um, roost or taunt for BO. Yeah, I think roost is free here actually. 
Taunt is also a good play predicting the Googly to go for recover. But Ruth is overall just the safest play because you don't want to risk anything exactly. And he has not real CM yet. Like, I don't know. If he's CM, the Glisco is only forced out after the Lari goes for CM. And even if it's CM, the Toxic is going to rack up and, like, destroy the Lari eventually. So even if it's CM, it doesn't beat Glisco well at all. But yeah, I'm, I kind of regret um, not talking about the potential of Black Oblivion going hard into Tita on the Lari earlier. I only talked about going Pharos on my bad guys. But yeah, I haven't uploaded in a, in a while, if you... I don't know. Yeah, obviously you guys can tell, right? I haven't uploaded in like 8 or 9 or 10 days, I don't know exactly. But yeah, I kind of lost my motivation, I don't know how to... I had that before. Like, sometimes you just need a break. Um, hopefully, um, I will upload more regularly, but I can't, like, promise anything. So, he just spams knockoff here, and... Ladi, uh, the toxic damage racks up, so Ladi's force out. He goes Tara, we see it's banded. Which was obvious after the Keldeer was revealed to be um, Choice Scarf. Glisco is obviously faster and kills a bit off quick. And now he can just go Feral Thorn here. Because the Lari is on a timer. He doesn't need the Feral for that anymore. And Clef should beat Lari. And especially when it's poisoned. And yeah. This is just a uh, free power up here. Hydro Pump doesn't even do it, Kyo. Because it's not Specs Keldeo. It's just Piss Weak Scarf Keldeo. So you just power up here. Because I don't think, yeah. I mean, Lee would have been an option as well, but power up seems fine. Get rid of the Kelio. Ladi's forced to recover, so, um. Well, I guess he could try to kill it with Surf, but I don't know if that kills. But yeah, I think you just Leech. Okay, he goes hard, Clef, and keeps the sack. Well, Calm Minds. He reveals Calm Mind finally, but now he just Moonblast, and since he's toxic, he loses 1v1 to the Clef. If he wasn't to. Oh, that crit sucks. Well, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It just speeds up the game. Yeah, if he's refresh CM with Surf, this could actually win, but there's no way he's that set. He's if he's CM, um he's probably stored power. And he has surfed to specifically hit Tita. I just I just I'm just annoyed that I didn't mention that earlier. I think my analysis was good overall, but he should have mentioned that the um Tita can come out on Lari, obviously. I only mentioned the Pharaoh. Okay, I've said it enough now. So he just flames right here, you pick up the Pharaoh, um okay he saves it as a forder. But it doesn't matter because it dies to hazards. The Lari pretty much doesn't do anything. And this Clef also doesn't win because you just heart. Black Ovian just hearts into Glitzcore here. And clicks Taunt. Um, I guess he can try to win the tie and click Moonblast because Moonblast might be a roll from here. But just going Glitzcore and Taunting pretty much guarantees you the win. If you, he can't do anything. If he goes Pharaoh, he dies to hazards. And if he goes Lari after, he, he is toxic so Lari doesn't win. And. Yeah, you always taunt you. You don't risk anything. But yeah, it was a Black Ovin had the better matchup, and he played f he played fine. Yeah, there was just the one play that would have done different, where he would have where he went, um, where he let the Pharaoh get all three layers instead of going Clef, and he let it get some lead sheet back. But it was not a huge misplay. And there was also another play where he stayed in with Glisco and Lari. Um, I guess maybe he knew the team. I don't know, but he risked getting Ice Beam. He would have lost if it was Ice Beam. But yeah, spamming Roost there is the correct play. After taunting, because Surf doesn't do anything. And yeah, Bio is probably... I mean, it's obvious, he's gonna win this game one. Bio, like, always performs well. Like, he qualifies for s to playoff quite sometimes. He calls for OLT playoffs, like, all the time when I follow OLT. But yeah, I'm just gonna say you guys can expect a lot more tournament coverage in the, in the next month. Um, just let me know in the comments if you're still watching. Do you want to still see all tournament games? I recorded, I have like a lot of games in the back from OST, from SPL, from every SPL week I have like some game left, at least I have like semi-finals and finals SPL games, I have them all live recorded, but I was just like so um, burned out I couldn't record for a while, so there's some games I just recorded my screen and I still have to narrate over them, right? And yeah, if I have, um, that's not gonna be now, the, world, the SPL games are not gonna be coming now, because at the moment I'm gonna be focusing on tournaments that are going on. So I'm going to be focusing on Smog Tours, which uh, round one ended today. I recorded every set. I only missed one game, uh, only half of it, and I'm going to record the replay of that half of the game and then live the rest of the game. And what's it called? And I have every other set live recorded pretty much. And World Cup is going to be starting soon. There's, uh, the last qualifier round is going on between Asia and... Um, between Asia and Austria at the moment. 
last um, round is going on and after that uh, world cup round one is gonna go up my friends play in world cup like i don't know if i'm allowed to leak anything some of my friends play in world cup i'm not gonna say any names in case i'm not allowed to <laughs> but i'm hyped to record them play live in tournaments so that's gonna be coming live to you world cup coverage you can expect that um, I didn't narrate the game anymore because it's really obvious to me that Black Oblivion is just going to take it home and it's just self-explanatory at this point. Um, that yeah, he, he always taunts Lari so it can only get one CM up. I mean even if he doesn't taunt it, it's on a timer anyway from the Toxic. So Keldeo comes out now and Keldeo if it can hit a Hydro Pump here, um, it's going to be able to kill the Clef. He's like he's like trying to end the game faster because if he goes kill score, then he has to taunt and it takes long. So skull, okay, skull, spec skull kills. Okay, um, I thought that um, skull doesn't kill. I think in auras, Clefable tend to they run spadev usually because it helps them take spec skull from Kelio and it also helps them take ice beam from life of Kyurem stuff like that. I don't know if those months like life of Kyurem is used anymore, but I just remember what the spread does. It also helped. Clef take like the hydro pump from Greninja when Greninja was allowed back in the day in Auras. I think it was allowed for a few months, I don't remember exactly. In XY it was. I think the spread in XY and Auras is kind of the same. But Google's Clef might have been a bit more fist dev or Black Oblivion just got a max roll from the Scald, one of the two. But yeah, uh, you guys can see the game is pretty much over. It is Sword Power, he shows the last move. Moonblast takes out the Lari and the game ends. And yeah, I'll see you guys with game two. Um, Google is gonna decide if it's Black, White or Sun and Moon. And yeah, just let me know if you want to see all the other S2 playoff sets. I, I know Blunder uploaded some of them, I don't really care. Um, if other, like, that he also uploaded them, that's obviously fine. Like, I'm, <laughs> my friend feel like, some, he said on a Poké M video that it, uh, he stole my views or something, because it's, it's, it's an insider joke, right? Because I upload, like, tournament games, and I used to upload every fucking tournament game. But I kind of lost my motivation, and then AIM started uploading games, so Seal made that bad the joke. I also made that joke once, but it's just a bad joke. Like I don't care if Blunder or AIM also upload tournament games. Um, they are great YouTubers. I also love watching their variant. It's just cool for me to also narrate and give my version and my thought process. So hope you guys enjoyed. Smash the like button if you did. And yeah, let me know if you want to see other tournaments, like I said. And peace out.